Offline first is very critical to having a great feeling application. It's a bit like saying, you know, mobile first in the web world, right? Targeting the, the most constrained sort of use case so that the rest of your use cases feel really great. Uh, well, in mobile app development, offline first is the key. So consider Twitter. Uh, when you post a new tweet on Twitter, one of two things could happen. It could throw an error at you saying, sorry, you're offline. Or it could accept that tweet and post it when the device comes back online later. That having been said, you can't do everything offline. Sometimes you need data. It's hard to give the user the appropriate feedback for you know, what's going to come and what has already occurred. Um, but this ensures a consistently awesome user experience, right? Uh, and if you design your application to be offline first, your, your users will thank you. There is one awesome tool uh, for accomplishing this, and that is Redux Saga. Redux Saga is powerful, it's expressive, it's, it's a joy to use once you, once you learn it and kind of look past its weird sort of syntax. Uh, but it's, it's actually capable of handling the sort of mobile, the mobile world. Redux Saga is what's called a side effect management system. And the mobile world is full of side effects. Every time your device goes offline, every time the user closes their application, every time they hit the Android back button, all of these are side effects which affect your application and you need to manage them. And Redux Saga is a super expressive way to handle all of them with the same sort of way of working. Now, the, the most uh, frequent complaint about Redux Saga is that it's too complicated. So we're going to write some together. Here we go. First, a bit of background. Our application does not uh, directly make network calls from our UI, right? So we dispatch an action for every time we want to access our network services. And there's a good reason for this. So in our application, if you uh, fire off a network request and then close your application immediately, but then come back, that network request will still occur. You know, we use OAuth authentication. If the user session has expired, well, then when the response comes back, we will actually grab your refresh token uh, perform an OAuth refresh, get the new access token, attach that to the old request, fire off the new request, and service the result totally transparently to the user. So this is to say making a simple network request isn't always so simple. So here's our to-do list. We're going to uh, first fire fetch based on FSAs, Flux Standard Actions. So these are just uh, you know, standard actions in, in Redux. And then we're going to persist it to state, right? So if the user closes their app and then comes back, we want to we want to still process that that network request. So we need to persist it. We're going to buffer it, right? So if they make multiple requests, we want to keep all of them. And then we're going to add a timeout just in case you know some weird things are going on. Uh, we're going to pause these requests if the device goes offline, right? So you fire the request, but then your network uh, drops. We're going to pause it and then resume it once you're back. And then the big one, we're going to handle multiple of these simultaneously, well, as simultaneous as JavaScript gets. So we start with what is called the watcher pattern in, in Redux Saga. So this is kind of your, your bread and butter saga. And it, it's really quite easy to read. Um, just ignore the yield statement. Often people explain Redux Saga by talking about generators and all this other crap. It actually doesn't matter. <coughs> Don't worry about it. Just think every line is synchronous, that it has a yield. Um, and, and the yield function actually doesn't matter you have helper functions to describe what is actually going on. So the first one that you need to know is take. So if an action is dispatched with a type of request, this function will continue, right? So we're going we're gonna to first start up the saga. It's going to run forever. But then it's going to wait until it gets a request action type. The second helper is call. 
This is super trivial. Actually, you don't need it. It's just a helper for writing tests later. But basically, this will just invoke your function. And fetch here is your normal browser fetch function. And to fetch, we're going to give the payload of our action. So if you dispatch an action with a type of request and a payload with a URL, well, that'll be the URL that the fetch function calls. Next, we're going to put out a different type of action once the fetch call has returned. So Redux Saga uh, transparently handles promises for you. So if you use the call function here, you won't have a result until that promise is resolved. And this res is the promise uh, resolution. So we're, then we're going to put, we're going to dispatch a new action. So we have our exact function that we had before, right? But now we're including the original request and the response in the in the action payload. Um, but actually, uh, the second function that I've included here is a reducer, right? So this is in your Redux state, and basically it just means that for every uh, request we're going to store it, and for every response we're going to remove it, right? So we're only storing in state the active requests. Yeah. So details don't really matter there. Next step. Redux Saga provides uh, a whole bunch of helpers for you, and one of them is an action channel. So an action channel uh, will just allow you to uh, get every action that is dispatched for a certain type. So what do I mean? I mean, this part, whoops, this part is going to run forever, right? But then it's immediately going to wait until there's an action in the channel. And then it's going to wait while it makes the network request. But what if at this time, another request action is fired? Well, this, uh, if you don't use an action channel like this or some other patterns uh, like take every, um, there's no one listening for that action, so it'll just kind of fire off into, into nowhere. But with an action channel, you actually get a buffer of all of these requests that you can process. So we're going to take all of the actions out of the channel. We're going to call fetch for each of them and, and uh, dispatch a response. Here I've introduced a new uh, Redux Saga helper function called race. Uh, so race might be familiar to some people, but basically it means we're going to do two asynchronous actions and then we, uh, we unblock race, we get a result from race if either of them completes, right? So whichever one completes first, that's our result. Yeah. So we're going to fire off the request and then we're going to race fetch against a delay. And this is our timeout, right? So we can easily say, okay, you know, I want to wait five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever. You could actually configure it per action if you wanted to. Uh, you race your fetch against delay. So if delay wins, Redux Saga will actually cancel the other processes for you. But if the result won, then we want to put this result. If, uh, if the delay won, uh, that is, if the request timed out, then we don't dispatch the result. Okay, so don't get scared. There's a star here. Don't panic. Uh, this just means that it's a generator function, which is necessary to use the, uh, the Redux Saga syntax that I've been using so far. But basically, this entire function is everything that we've done up until this point, right? So let's ignore that, right? So we've wrapped everything that we had so far in a function, but now I want to cancel all of that if the device goes offline, right? So here's our, here's our uh, fun function race again, which is doing the same thing. It's taking on offline and racing that against a fork, right? So another Redux Saga helper function. So fork is uh, mentally, not physically, but mentally, it's just like uh, fork in other software applications, right? It's a separate task that you just spawn and can more or less forget about. But with race, the combination here is that if 
an action called offline is dispatched, again, race will cancel this forked work, right? So what, what does that mean in practice? That means that my request channel is still active, right? It's still taking actions into its buffer this entire time. That doesn't stop, right? But the worker, the thing that is taking the requests out of the channel and actually firing the fetch stops when the device goes offline. The next function just waits. It'll just pause and wait until the device comes back online. The while true loop continues. The, the fork worker is called and uh, the worker resumes processing network requests. Right? So let's reflect on what, what was just accomplished in, in just a couple lines here, right? Like this would be exceptionally difficult to manage using something like callbacks, promises, async await. We want to add parallelism to this, right? We have our worker again. We can ignore that. Uh, here we have the same stuff that we had before. But I'm using a new helper function, which I call fork times, right? So instead of fork, it's fork times. And I give it the number of times I want to fork this function. So here, this just uh, is a normal function, which takes in the saga and the number of times you want to fork. And it, <laughs> it immediately creates a new fork itself, whose job it is to call fork on your saga that number of times. So... You know, maybe the syntax is a little is a little weird, but with this, you're able to process in this case five parallel network requests on top of everything that we wrote in just a couple lines. Any questions? Yes. How do you make sure that um, actually everything that has to be processed is back in the line? I don't know if I can do it so reliably, but here here's real fast. If I say try uh, catch, right? That's one thing. But you can actually do a try finally. Um, and the finally will be called when this saga function is canceled, right? So I said that race uh, here will cancel this function if the, if the take wins the race, right? Well, Redux Saga gives you a chance to do something if that were to occur, right? So then you say if yield canceled, which is a helper function, don't worry about it. And then you can say uh, yield put rec. So you went offline, you have a chance to do something about it, the task was canceled, so put that request back into the queue uh, to be tried again. This one? Yeah. Uh, it's actually harder in React Native than, than one might wish. Network connectivity uh, uh, from React Native, which will give you some events, but in the mobile world, that's not totally reliable, right? So we actually, uh, using Redux Saga, uh, instead of just uh, doing nothing, right, if the delay happens here, we actually say if your request uh, had a network error, if the, if the timeout occurred, we actually manually put the device into offline mode at, at that time. 